Welcome to another edition of Here We Are. My name is Jimo Cheatham, and today we'll be speaking to Mr. Max Roach. Mr. Roach, welcome. Oh, well, thank you all for having me. I can't tell you, every time I've come to Chicago, it's always been an experience. And of course, I've been coming to Chicago since 1944. And uh, Chicago at one time was like a second home for us because the town was so rich in uh, this area of the world of sound that I am involved in loosely called jazz. And uh, of course at that time, the, the, the young musicians around Chicago who, were, who, would, who were, were legends then for us, when we came from the East Coast to Chicago, we had to reckon with the likes of uh, Wilbur Ware and all the great young musicians who were here. Ike Day, one of the greatest drummers I'd ever heard in my life, who was maybe, we were, I guess we were about the same age. We used to practice on pillowcases so mm -hmm. that you could, you could, you'd learn how to take the sticks up off the drum, you know. And you, we'd roll on these things, or we'd take news, a sheet of newspaper and hold it for each other and play on it without cracking the newspaper. And this is a lot of wonderful things. And, and, uh, and at that time in Chicago, you played 24 hours a day you could find a place to work in. The mm. South Side was so rich in the music, and I had a chance to hear uh, Red Saunders, one of the greatest show drummers and theater drummers that ever lived at the Club de Lisa. It was just something. So when I, and now that I'm into my autobiography, uh, coming back to Chicago, I'm recalling a lot of things, you know. I, I think about the Delisa and what happened up to Roberts and all the wonderful places and and uh, uh, what was happening on there. Clifford Brown and I spent weeks here. And in those days, what was so wonderful, you'd come to a town and stay for two, two months in the same club. And it gave you an opportunity to really hone your skills and, and work things out, plus, you played all night long. And when you're young, to, to practice, that's practice, to put in that much time on the instruments. And uh, of course, I came here with Benny Carter and Charlie Parker and Nat King Cole was on the scene. He wasn't singing at that time. But they called him the King because he was one of the best piano players in the country. Along in, and in that time, Father Earl Hines was here, I remember. And Father was, Earl Hines and Albert Ammons and all these great stride pianists to be called King was something. And so Nat Cole, I don't think his, 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 uh, they, he's made a lot of records as a pianist. Because when we were on the road with uh, Benny Carter's band, he was the second act with just his trio. And he would sing one or two songs, but basically what he did was play the piano. And so I got a lot of great memories of Chicago. Why, do you play Why did drums, you start playing Mr. drums, Mr. Roach? Why did you pick up this instrument? Uh, that's an interesting question. When I was very young, you know, I grew up during the, uh, the Depression, and the WPA existed at that time. And my family came from North Carolina. We were farmers. And we came to New York in 1928, 1929, the, uh, the roof came in on the country, you know, the, the, everything. Everybody was broke, people were in the streets, and, and the bread lines were rampant. But our family, because of uh, racism in the South, we were, we were small farmers. And, and uh, there was a black enclave where all the, the farmers uh, 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 collectively would, would harvest whatever they were, were farming that, that particular year and take it into the marketplace. And, they, and the black farmers had to wait until the small white farmers sold their goods, and then they would have a chance to, to sell their wares. And so when, they got, when it got to us, my father would tell me, the price went down. So they always owed money to the general store for feed for the animals and for whatever they needed to farm with. 
So they were always in the hole. So we migrated, my family migrated to New York and, and, and to the steel mills in Pittsburgh looking for, for work. Well, we came to New York City and the depression came, the roof fall fell in and there we were in the streets. My family had no idea about anything about the city, you know, because they were farmers. And so uh, we spent most of our time in the church. And it was in the church where we were exposed to um, T, uh, the WPA Works Projects Administration where it was probably the only time that the United States of America subsidized the artists. And all over the country, these artists built these great post offices and buildings and stuff for, for little or nothing. And there were black workers involved in all this, the sculptors and the painters and things and, 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 and like that. And in, in the church, we had people who taught us music. And when your family went out to look for work, they deposited the kids in church. And my brother, who was about oh, two years older than I, than, than, than me, I wanted to do everything he wanted to do. And in church, I was about eight years old, and we got bugles. He got bugles, so I brought a bugle home. I couldn't get a sound out of the instrument, so mom told me, she said, son, why don't you bring something home that you can deal with? So I brought a snare drum home. That's how I got involved in drums. And from then on, I, I just stayed with him. And during that period, they had house rent parties all over the countries, here in Chicago too. And now I'm talking about 1933, 34, 32, during that period. And so in all of our, all of our homes, house rent parties were given to help us pay the rent, each family. And uh, <clears throat> they'd have, uh, and so they were all our mu musicians. They had drum sets and basses and pianos and apartments and drums. And so we as kids, used to experiment with these things. And then we all got started like that. Bud Powell and, gee, the people that we read about today, Charlie Parker, we mm -hmm. got started with these house rent parties. Music was an integral part, not only of our lives and singing and things like that, but it was also a way of us raising money to help buy food and, and pay the rent. Okay. You um, grew up with the likes of a Charlie Parker? Did you take that presence for granted? Was this your friend back in the day? Well, in those days, I grew up with Bud Powell. We were in New York, and Sonny Rollins was in New York. Uh, Charlie Parker came from San Francisco, from, from, I'm sorry, from Kansas City. But he came to New York about 19, when I met him, it was about 1943, 44. And he was introduced to me by, um, it, was a, it was a wonderful time during then for young people who really wanted to get involved with the music, mm -hmm. because uh, there were two unions. There was a black union and a white union. So we controlled our own destiny in a sense. Uptown in Harlem, the South Side, Chicago. We, it, was, it was a separate type thing. So we, we worked seven days a week. And uh, as I said earlier, you, you, we came to Chicago and New York City. You stayed in clubs with the bands for years, two, three years at a time we worked. Well, we had a little band in New York City that worked the so-called legitimate clubs. That was the white clubs downtown New York, and the illegitimate clubs mm -hmm. were, the, were the clubs up on, 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 in Harlem. Here was on the south side. They opened up at four o'clock in, in the morning, and you played and worked, playing shows, elegant clubs they were as well until 9 and 10 o'clock the next morning. And this was good for us, but when Charlie Parker came to New York with King Kolax's band and witnessed and heard what we were doing, he joined our little band. That's when I met Charlie Parker in 1943, because we worked, we would go to work downtown from 9 to 3, pack up our gear, run to uptown and work from 4 until, and then we'd look for places to play during the day, 